In this video, we're going to cover the definitions and relevance of enzymes and their definitions, ligands and substrates, isoelectric points, affinity, and Hill's coefficient. We'll also cover the numbers that are involved in enzymes like Ka and Kd, Km, Vmax, Kcat, and catalytic efficiency. For your note taking, this is in the bio biochemistry section, content category 1A for those following along with the AAMC notation, subtopic enzymes and enzymatic reactions. All right, so let's get started with what is an enzyme. An enzyme is a protein, so it's made up of amino acids that are held together with peptide bonds, but these proteins have a special function. They catalyze reactions. And like all catalysts, they have a couple special rules. One is that they're not consumed in the reaction. So that means that they help catalyze it, they help the reaction happen, but they don't themselves get used up in the reaction. So they'll be on the reactant side and the product side of any reaction that takes place. Second is that they only affect the kinetics or the speed of the reaction. So they're not going to be affecting anything about the equilibrium or about the thermodynamics of the reaction. So terms like spontaneity, Gibbs free energy, enthalpy, entropy, all of those not affected by enzymes. The only thing that enzyme affects is the speed of the reaction. A specific definition that you may have learned is that enzymes lower activation energy. That definition is often accompanied by this figure where you can see that there's a hump of energy that a reaction needs to overcome in order to proceed forward. And that enzymes make that hump smaller. That hump is the initial cost that any reaction has in order for it to proceed and to get to its products. Enzymes will lower that cost, so it will cost less energy for that reaction to proceed forward. Enzymes do this in a variety of ways, but it's often that their active site creates an optimal environment for that reaction to take place, either by arranging the substrates and the reactants in a specific way to optimize binding, or having a favorable pH environment, or salinity, but making it like you want to react here, right, is what the enzyme does. So we have several definitions. So just to recap, enzymes are proteins that are not consumed in a reaction, they simply catalyze it. They affect the kinetics, the speed of at which a reaction happens, but not the thermodynamics. They also lower activation energy. So they decrease the initial cost a reaction needs to proceed forward without affecting the starting or ending point of that reaction. Now let's talk about ligands and substrates. So these are terms are often used interchangeably, so let's make sure that we understand the definition and differences before we move forward. A ligand is a molecule that binds to any protein, whether it's an enzyme or not. So it could bind to an enzyme, but it could also bind to a transport protein or a receptor. So it's just anything that binds to a protein. A substrate, on the other hand, is a specific molecule that binds to and is catalyzed by an enzyme. So all substrates are ligands, but not all ligands are substrates which means we can use either term when we're talking enzymatic binding and reactions, but substrate's going to be the more specific version, so that's what we'll use moving forward. So we have two key players in an enzyme-catalyzed reaction, enzymes and substrates. Now let's talk about some characteristics that you'll need to know to answer questions. The first characteristic is isoelectric point, or PI which is a characteristic of all amino acids and proteins and lets us know what charge that protein or amino acid will have at a given pH. So if the pi of our protein or enzyme is approximately equal to the pH of the environment, that protein or enzyme will have a neutral net charge, so no net charge. If the enzyme or protein has a pi value of lower than the pH of the environment, then it will have a net negative charge, it will look negative and proteins that have a pi value of greater than the pH of the environment will have a positive net charge. For enzyme questions, you won't need to memorize specific pi values for enzymes or proteins, but you should be able to understand what they mean when they're given to you in a problem or a passage. We're actually going to work through an example of that in part two of this video series. All right, now let's move on to enzyme affinity, which is a big concept in this category. Enzyme affinity just refers to the tightness or strength of the binding between an enzyme and its substrate. Basically, how much do they want to hang out? Generally speaking, if you want your enzyme to catalyze a reaction efficiently, a high affinity for a substrate is a good thing. So high affinity, a better enzyme, generally catalyzes more efficiently. 
Some factors that affect enzyme affinity are the 3D structure of the enzyme's active site, so where that substrate binds, if it's favorable, if it's easy to get into, uh, the temperature of the environment or pH of the environment, and the presence of cofactors or inhibitors that can impact the affinity or binding of an enzyme and its substrate. Let's finish these conceptual topics by talking about Hill's coefficient. So Hill's coefficient is a number that tells us whether or not a protein that we're looking at has cooperativity. This is not exclusive to enzymes. Proteins like transporter proteins can also exhibit cooperativity as well. So cooperativity is a specific situation where our enzyme or protein has multiple binding sites. So multiple things can bind to this enzyme or protein. And then the first ligand that binds to this protein will impact the binding ability of the rest of those binding sites. So it kind of changes the protein to impact the rest of the binding. So in order to have cooperativity, we first need to have multiple binding sites. Then the Hill's coefficient value can let us know, A, if we have cooperativity, and B, what type of cooperativity we have. So a Hill's coefficient of one means no cooperativity. Either there's only one binding site, or there are multiple sites, but they don't impact each other at all. So coefficient of one, no cooperativity. A Hill coefficient of greater than one means positive cooperativity, where that first ligand to bind will make all the other binding sites more favorable, so having better affinity for the next ligand that comes in. It will bind faster and easier. And then a Hill's coefficient of less than one means negative cooperativity. So that first ligand that binds means that the rest of the ligands will have a harder time binding. It will have less affinity for the rest of the ligands and those binding sites. One commonly tested concept around cooperativity is how it affects a binding curve or a graph depicting the binding affinity of a protein or enzyme. A protein displaying cooperativity will have a sigmoidal binding curve, or an S-shaped curve, like this one here for hemoglobin. So when you're in passages or questions, if you see an S-shaped curve, I want you to think in your head, I'm seeing cooperativity. Before we move on to the numbers around enzyme activity, like KM, KCAT, and catalytic efficiency, I wanted to remind you to subscribe to this channel. I post videos on MCAT content, MCAT strategy and skills, and also study tips for stress management, studying efficiently, and preparing for your test day. I also have linked in the caption below my MCAT practice exam mini course, which takes you through how to take a full length practice exam and review it so that you can be effective and efficient in your prep. So check it out. And now let's move on to the numbers related to enzyme activity. Our first numbers that we're gonna talk about are Ka and Kd, or the association and dissociation constant respectively. Unlike the rest of the numbers we're going to talk about in this video, K and KD can apply to any protein ligand bonding, so they're not exclusive to enzymes, and they describe the equilibrium constant, right? So the thermodynamic principles behind the reaction as opposed to the kinetic parameters. So like most K EQs, most equilibrium constants, the equation for Ka and KD is just products over reactants. Now, which products and which reactants are we referring to? Well, for Ka, we take the enzyme and the substrate, and then they're going to associate, they're going to bind to, into the enzyme substrate complex. And that association is the association reaction. So the Ka is describing the association of the enzyme and its substrate. Conversely, if we take that enzyme substrate complex and separate them back out, that's going to describe the dissociation reaction, or the KD. So we have our Ka, where the enzyme and substrate are coming together, and then the KD, where they're separating, and the products over reactants for each of those just depends on the direction. Now, conceptually, if we have a high product for our Ka, that means that we really want to associate. We really want to make that substrate complex with the enzyme, right? And so that means probably they have a high affinity. So high Ka equals high affinity of the enzyme for its substrate because it wants to form that enzyme substrate complex. It's favorable if the products are greater than the reactant. Now, for KD, the opposite is true, right? If we don't really want to associate, if we want to dissociate a high KD, meaning we really don't want to be together, that means a low affinity. Now, you might think, okay, well, let's just describe everything as KA because high K, high affinity, it's more straightforward. 
For sure, unfortunately, it's easier for us in a lot of cases to calculate our KD uh, experimentally than our KA. So often, the number you'll be provided on the MCAT is the KD. So just know that a high KD is low affinity, or if we're looking for the best enzyme, right, the one with the highest affinity, we want a low KD or a high KA. Our next two values are some of the most common that will show up for enzyme kinetics questions, Vmax and Km. So Vmax is the maximum reaction velocity, which just means if we gave the enzyme as much substrate as it could handle, how fast could it turn it over? So if you're on an assembly line or you're wrapping presents and you're pretty quick, but you have thousands of presents to wrap, at a certain point, no matter how fast you go, there will always be more presents. And so then we can calculate your max speed. Similarly, that's how we calculate Vmax, is we put in way more substrate concentration than there is enzyme concentration, so increased substrate relative to enzyme, and we see, okay, how fast can this enzyme work when it has unlimited substrates to catalyze? And that's what's known as the saturation point. So in order to calculate Vmax, we need to reach that saturation point by getting enough substrate for our enzymes to catalyze. We usually want to keep enzyme concentration constant, right? Because if we put in more enzymes, put in more workers on the assembly line, of course our Vmax will increase. So we want to keep enzyme concentration constant and then increase substrate concentration to calculate our maximum velocity, which is how fast can this thing go? Obviously, a high Vmax means a very good enzyme, right? It works very quickly. Now, Km is known as the Michaelis constant, and this is one of the constants we use in our michaelis menten equation, which is how we calculate Vmax in the kinetics of our enzymatic reaction. Mathematically, Km is the amount of substrate that we need to get up to half of our max velocity. So if our Vmax is 100 moles per minute, then half of that would be 50 moles per minute. Our Km is how much substrate we need to put into the reaction to get up to 50 moles per minute, to get up to half speed. The analogy I like to use with this, and I'm not a car person, is how people describe cars. So they'll talk about their top speed, their Vmax, but they'll also talk about the 0 to 60 acceleration. So I had a Mazda, and my Mazda can go 0 to 60, so about to half speed, in 3 seconds. Not bad. But if my friend has a Maserati, they're going to brag, they're going to say, hey, my Maserati can go 0 to 60 in 1 second. So it takes less time for that Maserati to get up to half speed. Similarly, a good enzyme will take less substrate to get up to half Vmax. So a low Km means a more effective enzyme, and specifically that that enzyme has a higher affinity for its substrate. It's easier for it to find it and react it and get it up to half speed. Now, a lot of people do have some confusion around Km versus Kd. So just know that from a relationship standpoint, they do the same thing. Low Km and low Kd both mean a better enzyme. But a Km is referring to the kinetic variable of getting up to speed, whereas the Kd is the overall equilibrium. So conceptually, they're different ideas. They're describing different parts of the reaction. But for the purposes of an enzyme's function, if we're comparing multiple enzymes, Low Km and low Kd is what we're looking for for a better enzyme. Now let's talk about Kcat, or the turnover number. The turnover number, Kcat, those terms are used interchangeably on the MCAT, so look out for both, they mean the same thing. This is a kinetic calculation based on a michaelis menten data set or equation that we have, and the equation that we'll use to calculate Kcat is Vmax, so our max reaction velocity, over our enzyme concentration. So I told you when we talked about Vmax that we usually keep our enzyme concentration constant to calculate it. So this variable is really just saying how fast can a given reaction occur with a certain amount of enzyme. This is purely a measure of enzyme speed, and so a higher number is better, right? If it takes us less enzyme to get up to max velocity and that max velocity is higher, then we'll have a higher Kcat value. Higher Kcat value means a better enzyme. Let's contrast that with our last variable that we're going to talk about in this video, which is catalytic efficiency. And this equation is Kcat over Km. So it's really bringing in all the variables of our kinetics relationships for our enzyme. 
So we have our kcat, right, which is like how fast can it go for a certain amount of enzyme, and then we have our km, which is, okay, if there's less that's required, that means we have a higher affinity. So you can work this through with me. What does a high Vmax and a low km give you? So high Vmax gives us high kcat, so our numerator is big, and a low km, which remember is what we want, is a lower denominator. So if we have a high numerator and a low denominator, that means our overall number will be big, right? So a bigger catalytic efficiency is also better. And this kind of combines all the pieces. It combines how much affinity it has, enzyme and substrate, max speed, and a given amount of enzyme. So we have kind of a full vision of what this enzyme can do with the term catalytic efficiency. All right, I hope you enjoyed that video. We covered a ton of information about enzymes and their properties and how to understand the different numbers and values that will show up on test day. In part two of this video series, we're gonna go through three MCAT style questions, all on the terms we talked about in this video to make sure that we can apply these concepts to MCAT style questions that you may see on test day. So I'll see you there, and until then, happy studying.